I'm going to read you a story from Tales of the East Nook, a book of different anecdotes about the East Nook of Fife, collected by my grandmother, my mother and myself, right through the last century. Village Temptations, this one is called. What another colour have you got? Lizzie asked in a serious tone, then broke into helpless giggles as she looked at her friend Aggie. Mrs Duff, the fat and cynical shop owner, looked stonily at the two pretty young girls. There's the cream, like these shins, and pink and blue and beige. Aggie stroked the silky knitted fabric of the large bloomers which lay before her under the hissing gas lamps. They're awfully big. That's the smallest size available. Well, they may do to. Celanese. It's the finest sort of artificial silk and it's all knitted up like. C can we see the other colours or no? The shop was small and crammed with every possible cubic inch of space utilised to display an astonishing variety of goods. Delicate lace-trimmed baby wear was arranged on stands. All types of underwear and nightwear were folded, tightly packed in glass-fronted drawers. Sheets, towels, dusters hung from the ceiling like medieval banners. On several surfaces were piles of brightly patterned cotton pinnies, the uniform of the local housewives each with a crossover front and a binding of bias tape. Wools of many colours and thicknesses were piled on shelves or balls from paper sacks on the floor, and all the appurtenances of embroidery were obviously available, while more mundane necessities such as buttons, tape or elastic were stowed away in battered cardboard boxes. These were piled up in swaying towers. Embroidery was Mrs Stuff's speciality. The five other drapery stores in the town were each known for one particular section of the soft goods trade. Although each kept a wide selection of stock, the largest draper could supply linoleum, rugs, even furniture. Another would provide suits and shirts for funerals or weddings. Another sold the high boots and heavy clothing required by seamen. The two smallest shops relied strongly on baby wear, toilet paper, However, all the shops sold wool, for it was a time at which every female was dedicated to productivity and dedicated from an early age. Women knitted as they stood at their doors and gossiped, and little girls in the school playground crouched over knitting, crochet or rat's tails. Though the population of the village numbered less than 1,000, there was little travelling done in the penurious thirties and such a plethora of drapers, while not exactly thriving, continued from year to year in business.